Good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Center's Political Brew. You know, there's a lot to talk about in the world of politics. Some people, I think, are a little distracted. You know, ah, focused on other things, really? perhaps, tonight. Yes, I can't <laughs> wait. I thought the game was at 6.40 a.m. Oh, no, no, no. We got, you got another 12 hours. Yeah. I'm in the wrong studio. Is this Bill Belichick I'm with here? <laughs> well, he keeps the sleeves on, so it's... Uh, <clears throat> Go it's Patriots. Good. Yeah, <laughs> You can't afford to have jersey uh, sweaters and cut the sleeves off. Uh, but there is uh, a lot to talk about in politics. Begin with uh, the main Republican Party re-elected its party leaders, uh, uh, the chairwoman, Demi Kazunas. Uh, who has not been known for selling the party message all that well, but Governor Paul LePage likes her, wanted her to stay in that job, and she is saying she wants to see Republicans be a little more confrontational as they take on the Democrats now that the GOP is in the minority. Uh, Phil, is that the right approach for the party? Well, I think it, it is uh, in the sense that you need to have an alternating current of po uh, political discourse for people to decide where they really come down on issues. I think it's how you do it. And for the Republicans now in the minority, it is their responsibility to challenge the majority, to make sure that the policies, that they have enough votes essentially to do whatever they want, have been well thought out. John? I'm not sure we could be more challenging than when we had you know, Paul LePage for eight years. I mean, that was as challenging, I think, as you get. That's pretty confrontational. It yeah. is confrontational, and I think that uh, we had a referendum if in this vote of uh, this last election where uh, people didn't want a third term of, of uh, Paul LePage, and as a result of that, I think it's a mistake on the Republicans' part to go ahead and try to continue with the with that confrontational style. I think the style of collaboration, I think, would get them further down the road. Now, former Senate Republican leader Garrett Mason, who ran for governor unsuccessfully, uh, he was in the running for GOP chairman and dropped out, saying this has become a cult of personality, the state Republican Party. Clearly, he's talking about Paul LePage. I think Garrett Mason's an up-and-comer within the Republican Party if they would embrace him. And I think that uh, he probably stepped away because it's not his style. It's not a style to be confrontational. He's more about policy and he's more about working uh, you know, across the aisle. So I think they missed an opportunity uh, without uh, Garrett Mason at the lead. Yeah, I, I, I think Garrett's a, a fine person. He speaks well. He handles himself well. He's been in elected office as opposed to some of the other party leaders. I think at the end of the day, though, we have to look back, and it wasn't until Paul LePage, after Angus King, after John Baldacci, for what was 16 years we before Republicans a were in the a majority of, again of, of all three branches, uh, by that track D record, D I think you know he does have a legacy that carries uh, on, and we'll see how much longer. And a legacy he doesn't want to let go of, apparently, from Florida this week. <laughs> uh, Governor LePage was lashing out at Governor Janet Mills uh, from poolside in Florida. He spoke to WVOM VOM Radio on Tuesday. He slammed many of Governor Mills' early initiatives, said she closed Maine for business by putting up a welcome home sign instead of open for business um, and said he's very close to announcing he's going to challenge her in 2022. Phil, what's going on here? This is three weeks that since he left office. Uh, let me put it this way. How can we miss you if you <laughs> won't go away? I mean, he had his time. It's come and gone. It's time as Barack Obama did when his term was over, as George Bush before him. Relax. And Maine governors have done right. traditionally. Right, right. John? It's been tough for him to give up the microphone, sure, I, I, I think, and yeah. I think it's probably that way with many elected officials who've been on the stage, center stage, for so long, but I think it's time for him to step back. I think it hurts his party. I actually think it hurts his legacy as well, and I think that he'd do well. I mean, my God, you know, Janet's been here just three weeks. How much harm could you have done within three weeks, right? <laughs> and yet we hear that the sky is falling from uh, former Governor LePage. Uh, this week, uh, the uh, subject of paid family leave has been bubbling up. We knew this was coming. Speaker Sarah Gideon has a, a bill she wants to propose, which may involve a new payroll tax to pay for guaranteed 12 weeks of leave for every worker in Maine. John, how is this fight likely to shape up? Well, I understand it's about a half a cent, I think, a payroll tax, and so I think it's a great idea, don't get me wrong, but uh, I think uh, Governor Mills has indicated no new taxes within the first two years, and so I don't know how you can square up the funding source with what is a great idea that Speaker Gideon has brought forward. Uh, like a lot of great ideas, they cost money, and, and they'll have to look for priorities within the budget if they want to fund it. And Phil, this represents the challenge that Governor Mills, we have known, is going to face, and that is the progressive wing of the party has a big wish list. Uh, you know, you've, I think you've analyzed it just right. We're talking about this one because of the prestige of the Speaker of the House's office, Sarah Gideon. It's her bill, more likely why we're talking about it. 
The fact is there are hundreds of bills in the legislature working their way into the system that are going to cost money. I'm told there's almost a dozen dealing with workers' compensation uh, issues. So this is the beginning of what I think is going to be the biggest challenge for the administration, which is how do you keep your party happy that just won a big overwhelming election and not go so far as to raise taxes and be anti-business and all the and, rhetoric that we and, hear. And I agree with Phil. It's the pent-up demand that has been there for Democrats both in the House and Senate and how Janet manages the expectations is going to make all the difference in the world for the next uh, 2020 election. All right, lots more to talk about on Political Brew this morning. We'll do that in the next hour. News Center and Storm Center back after this.